Welcome back everyone. In this video, I'm talking about the breakup and the final fall of the Roman Empire in the West. Constantine, as you remember, has established a new stronghold, a new capital for the empire in the East with the building of the city of Constantinople. But there's pressure on the empire's frontiers, pressures from the Goths who are trying to escape from the Huns further to the east in Central Asia. And the Romans decide to allow the Goths to enter the empire, enter a small border area of the empire in the hope that they'll create uh, a border control force, in the hope uh, that they'll provide a zone of protection for the rest of the empire. The Romans are always, if you remember, had a good track record of integrating people into their empire. But in this instance, the Romans do not do a good job. The Goths, uh, this Germanic people from the outside of the empire, are just allowed to live um, on the edges of the empire. And as the Romans become more nervous about the Goths, more nervous about controlling the Goths, they actually begin to mistreat them and to abuse them. And eventually the situation becomes so bad that the Goths rise up and rebel against the Romans. They defeat them at the Battle of Adrianople and in doing so destroy most of the Roman army. And the Romans now are no longer able to drive the Goths out of the Roman Empire. And this is really the beginning at the end in a lot of ways. Um, this is when it becomes um, apparent that the Roman Empire is really going to struggle to defend its territory. In this hour of crisis, the Romans choose a Spanish general named Theodosius to become the emperor. Theodosius tries to make the best of a bad situation. He makes an alliance with the Goths. Risky strategy, but perhaps all that's left available to him. He has very little Roman military strength left to call upon. And he also brings an end to the Arian controversy within the Roman Empire. He calls it yet another church council, the Council of Constantinople. And at this council, uh, Arianism is condemned again, and it seems as though from this point, without any imperial backing, the Arian Christians are eventually going to be subsumed back into uh, among Catholic Christians. The, the Catholic Christian uh, teaching on this controversy is going to be the one that will prevail. Theodosius manages to reunite the empire under his rule, but when he dies, he divides it again between his sons. Both of them soon turn out to be pretty worthless rulers, and um, it's very and the Goths no longer trust this alliance with the Romans. They no longer trust that the Romans are really working with them and aren't in some way trying to get rid of them. And the Romans in the east, in the city of Constantinople, realize that if this situation continues, the Goths the Goths will probably destroy the Roman Empire. And so they convince the Goths to leave the Eastern Roman Empire and go to the West and go to Italy. And this is how serious the situation has become. That the two halves of the Roman Empire, the East and the West, are now working almost against one another in order to try and save themselves. The Goths arrive in Italy in around 405. The Western Roman Empire is by now far less powerful than the Eastern Empire. Uh, they have no strength to drive the Goths out, and eventually the Goths sack the city of Rome in 410. And this is an event of real cultural trauma for Western civilization. This city, which for so long had been the center of the world, had been the capital of the world, um, suddenly they realize that they can't defend it anymore. That there are these new groups within the empire, within Europe, within Western Europe, that they are unable to control. And that Europe is going to become a very different place. So just to give you a brief overview of the Germanic groups that enter the empire. As the Romans in the Western Empire are trying to defend themselves, they bring uh, more and more troops uh, away out of England, out of France, and back to Italy. And all these Germanic tribes sweep across the, R the Rhine River into Western Europe. So we have one group called the Vandals, um, after whom Vandalism is called. It can, kind of gives you an idea of how they behaved inside the Roman Empire. They cross the Rhine, they cross modern-day France, they come to Spain. 
And they settle in Spain for a while, and then they are driven out by the Visigoths, the group who had sacked Rome, who have now also migrated to the West. And so the Visigoths are going to drive out the Vandals, and the Visigoths will establish themselves, will establish a Visigothic kingdom in Spain. The Vandals are driven out of Spain by the Visigoths, and they go to North Africa. So they take over North Africa, one of the most important and wealthiest provinces in the Roman Empire. And now something extraordinary happens, that this previous inland people, they become great seafarers. But they're not traders, they're pirates. And this is catastrophic for the already reeling Roman Empire. Remember how much of Rome's success was based on the economic wealth of goods being able to be transferred peacefully, successfully across the Mediterranean. And now that the Vandals have become seafarers, uh, pirates inside the Mediterranean, that's no longer going to be possible. And so the Roman Empire is going to continue to tank. It's going to tank economically. Another group of uh, another Germanic tribe, uh, the Franks, cross the Rhine River and they establish themselves in modern day France, where the name France comes from. It's the land of the Franks. The Franks were unusual in that um, they were pagans and they convert to Catholic Christianity. Many of these barbarian tribes that have come into the Roman Empire are not. Um, Catholic Christians and not pagans, they're Aryan Christians. They were converted by a uh, missionary sent by Constantius when he was the emperor and he was promoting Arianism. And so you now have a religious divide within the former Roman Empire. There's still some paganism. There are Aryan Christians and there are Catholic Christians. The Franks are interesting because they convert from paganism to Catholic Christianity. And so they have much more in common in religious terms with the former citizens of the Roman Empire who are still living in these territories. And so you start to find an alliance being forged between uh, the Roman Church and the Christian Church and the Christian bishops within the Roman Empire and the Franks and the Frankish rulers. Last Germanic tribe I'll talk about are the Ostrogoths. The Ostrogoths settle in Italy and eventually remove the last of the Roman Empire, the last of the Roman emperors, excuse me. And so the Roman Empire in the West has now disappeared. The sack of Rome in 410 inspired the Eastern Roman Empire to strengthen the fortifications of Constantinople. And Constantinople, with these improved fortifications, with its highly defensible location, means that the Eastern Empire will survive will become known as the Byzantine Empire. But the Western Roman Empire will disappear. And this brings with it some serious effects. Uh, there's now a religious division within the empire that I've already talked about. Uh, there's um, economic impoverishment because trade is no longer possible across the Mediterranean. Most people go back to becoming farmers trying to produce food for themselves. It's a political breakup. Uh, instead of one empire, you now have a lot of different kingdoms who are fighting with one another. The political, no one's quite sure what land they rule over, so the political situation is in flux. Uh, there's nothing or far less of the political stability that Rome had provided. The Germanic tribes who have now come into the empire, they lack the ability to maintain Roman infrastructure. So Roman roads, Roman aqueducts start to disappear. And so again, it was no longer possible to sustain large urban populations. People will go back to local farming communities. And, um, and another uh, cause of this change uh, with this political um, instability that's now present in Europe, education is no longer going to be possible um, to the same level and to the same audience that it was under the Romans. And so the fall of the Roman Empire in the West uh, brings about many challenges raises many challenges for the people of Europe um, to deal with. And how they approach these challenges, uh, what comes after the fall of Rome, um, this is what will spend uh, this topic, this big question, is what will spend much of the second half of the course addressing. So hope the module goes well for you, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.